Hi, welcome to uh, fifth class of uh, the complete course on Indian stock market. Topic of this fifth class is why stock market goes up and down. Obviously, as the topic suggests, you would have seen a lot of fluctuation in the market always. Every day you would hear market went up by 5% or 2% or half percent or it came down by 2-3%. So these kind of numbers you would have seen. And the similar number you would have seen also for the stocks also. So you would have seen one stock going 2% up and another day going 3% down, right? So stock is a kind of investment which we heard, which we learned in last four classes. And now we also know that FD is one of the investment. One FD gives you 6% return, consistent return, 7% consistent return in a complete year. And you would have seen even the best of the company's stock may fluctuate by 3 to 4% in a day itself. Okay. Now, today when I'm recording this lecture, uh, let me show you something. So, very first thing we'll say, okay, okay so one thing is like uh, I have updated all the topics, you know, what all the topics we are going to cover. So, there are total of 90 topics which you can go and check on the website and uh, out of which we are covering right now five topics. I must accept and tell you people that we wanted to keep the course live in terms of wanted to give you always the latest example about the market to learn. So, we will keep on enriching this course, keep on recording and uploading only the latest videos only. It only takes me one hour in video recording and processing. So, idea is everybody who is going to take the classes, they should always get the reset examples and we'll keep recording the videos. Unless and until some concept which will keep on going for, you know, the constantly for years and years, only those videos will be constant. But these kind of videos where we are doing a lot of discussion, they will be always with the latest examples. All right. So, coming back with the something which I wanted to show you is, Today is 4th of December and uh, if you go to NSC website, I have shown you this website before, you would see market is up by only half percent, 0.36 percent. But if you go and see some of the stocks today, you would see, okay, Tata Motor, 7 percent up. So, you can see that within a day, Tata Motor is giving here. 7% return to the investors. So, someone who would have invested yesterday would have already made 7% return. But is it possible that every time you go and only pick up those stocks which will go 7% up on the other day? Obviously not. Predicting future is something which is next to impossible and this is what is happening in the stock market is all about predicting futures basically or betting on the futures or calculating the future value and then accordingly taking the investment in stocks right so you would have seen that tata motor is seven percent up on the other side a company called lnt which is again a very good company in india a conglomerate it is down by 2.26 percent and if you see the high low of this company you would see that it's 1282 and 1312 which is like 18 rupees plus 12 rupees is like 30 rupees now two and a half percent fluctuation you would have seen in lnt itself let's take some other stock randomly. So, let's say I take Infratel. All right. So, what do you see in Infratel? In Infratel, you see it went for a low of 242 and it went for even 261. Wow. Which is like 20 rupees. What does it mean? It means that this stock in a day have fluctuated in a range of 8%. Now, this kind of scenario make people nervous also, especially people who want to come into the stock market for the very first time. And it also pull people or push people rather I would say to start trading into stock market. Because co at cognitive level, what always keep on going with them that they see a certain price and they think that this is probably the best price. And they would have seen a price where in recent days only they would have seen 10% or 15% up from that price. So they think like, you know, it is very easy to time between the range and that's how they can make money. Some people go and use advanced tool also. At the end of the day, everybody is trying to predict the market if they are trading. However, if you are an investor, you will look at the actual value of the company, 
maybe by doing intrinsic valuation or the relative valuation, create a portfolio, try to learn what are the risks and then try to manage it. But point here is why we have taken this topic into consideration. So as I said, this course will slowly grow towards, go towards the concept concepts which we are going to learn. But initially, all these nitty gritties of the market is something which I wanted to explain. So yes, this is one of the reason that since stock fluctuates a lot, it goes up and down a lot, a lot of people go and start trading into it. And a lot of people who are sitting on the sideline, they keep on waiting for the right price to come because they see that, okay, if Infratil has gone to 42, it may again come down to 42 and then they will buy. Or if they think that, okay, it is right now trading at 260 and it may come down to 250. So let me short it also from the trader perspective, what I'm telling you about. All right. So point here is very simple that people are trying to predict the future when they trade and which is also important to understand here that stock market also work on the future performance only. Whatever has happened with the company is some is an information which is a public information. Everybody knows that that okay this company has made certain revenue certain number of clients certain profit and that's why they are valued here or that's why they are here in the market but whether they will grow from here or not it's something which is a point of discussion which is also a point of analysis okay that okay with these kind of a strength company will survive for longer period or beat the competition they will still be you know, uh, giving the similar kind of cutting edge product and services to their clients. So, and these are their strength and weakness. These are the people who are running the company and they will be still here, you know. So, so predicting about the future performance of the company is something which is always taken into consideration by even traders and investors, right? So, so it's very difficult. You know, the predicting the future for 10, 15 years is very difficult. And when you bring it down, you know, for today's age, that prediction, then you would see that the fluctuation in the stock price is something which become inevitable. It has to happen. So it is very important to know that these kind of fluctuation will be there. And when you are going to invest into the stock market, you do not have to get worried because of these kind of fluctuations. If you are an investor for the long term, this 5-6% fluctuation in a day within the stocks or 3-4% fluctuation within the Nifty or the Sensex is not going to, you know, not going to what I can say, uh, not going to basically give you a bad return or not going to harm you in any way. You know, this fluctuation is the nature of this business. This fluctuation, this high and low is the nature of this stock market because because of the future expectation let us see some examples here so as we were looking at some of the examples i mean some of the companies here let let's say we take one of the company which went down only 2.26 percent right it is called lnt i have shown you in previous classes screener dot in now let's see We will learn about balance sheet, profit loss statement, and uh, also the cash flow statement later on in the fundamental analysis. But from now only, from this screener dot in, you can start developing your understanding on these numbers. So let's say we are taking this number, few numbers we will take. We will also open a Excel sheet here quickly. and we'll take out few numbers. So what you can see here is the book value. I'm sure you people remember about the book value of the company. Let me summarize it quickly. So book value of the company is exactly the value at which you know this company stand today. So if they pay off all the debt, sell off all the asset, 
the money which they will give to every investor is something called the book value of the company okay the actual value of the company but it is trading market price current market price is 1313 right so let's go and put these numbers why we are doing it i'll let you know so market cap of Larson and Tobro is 1 lakh 80 thousand crore 1.8 lakh crore per share value 1313 book value is 450 So it's like 0.29 if I go and uh, write it like this and then I divide 1.8 to this it becomes 62,000 crore company okay how it's 62,000 crore so it's 0.61 I just rounded it off it becomes 62,000 crore book value company so book value of the so simple i did a very simple thing so per share price current market price of lnt is 1313 book value is 4.450 so it's trading at 2.9 times more than the book value right so this is the trading market capitalization 1.8 crore so i just divided 1.8 by this factor this comes down to 0.61 and it becomes a 62000 crore company 62,000 crore is the book value of book value of LNT. Right. Now we will see that after deploying the 62,000 crore how much LNT is making basically so you can see the quarterly result and you know no the sum up all the four or you can see the last four quarter results so last four quarter is 9460 so 9460 crore money as pure profit they have generated on 62,000 crore cap capital deployment i mean the book value of the company is something like this is one money which is there deployed to business to do businesses to make re return so if you see that uh, try to calculate the return so you can see that uh, at 15 percent rate lnt is getting the return for its company 15 percent on the book value if we see the calculate the book value and if we calculate the profit total profit of last four quarter mm -hmm. then we can see that not see if you go and start dividing this 9460 from 1 lakh 80 thousand crore you will see that hardly five percent return is there so you will always wonder and question that why 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 someone which is worth 1.8 lakh crore is only making 9460 so idea is you do not have to look that you have to look that what is the capital which is deployed so capital deployed is actually the book value if we liquidated the company they would have got 62000 crore only what is the choice they had they could have gone and put this into fd and earned 7 percent return now see how many factors are here one factor is Will LNT keep on making 15% return? Yes or no? Yes. No. More. Less. There are so many factors involved, you know. So, some people who know LNT very closely and their moves, they may say that no, LNT is going to give better quarterly results. And when they are going to give better quarterly results, they may grow at 18% next year. And they are onwards some people may say no they are not doing really well we think that their profit is going to go lower 
so they will they will let's say give a number like it will grow at 10 percent right so people have different expectation based on different kind of analysis which is available for them but one underlying thing which stay constant is everybody is using certain formula and on the basis of those formula and numbers and the outcomes they decide about whether you know this company is going to give better performance or not and then they think about giving better premium to the stock prices so sometime if the whole economy is not going to do well the company stock performance may go down on that specific day because whole market will come down similarly in the sector in which lnt is performing if it is not performing well lnt may come down or it may go down go up really well similarly if the company own performance will not do well you know and you see that instead of 15 percent return they posted only 14 percent return next year again the share fluctuation will be very very high because on the basis of only 15 percent return which is like almost double of the fd return they are going to keep posting for year by year that's why people are giving them more premium so you can see here that this is part and parcel of the whole stock market you do not have to so these chapters are also for the people who are planning to invest into stock market basically you know so you should not be worried about these kind of fluctuation these are part and parcel of the market and since stocks are fluctuating in nature this whole market is made up of the cumulative performance of all the stocks so that's why you would see there is a good amount of uh, you know fluctuation and highs and lows you will keep seeing in the market but yes the better the company the better stability will it will have a good company like reliance a good company like infosys and tcs will have lesser fluctuation in the market than the other companies when i say lesser uh, lesser uh, you know fluctuation i would like to introduce here one concept which is also called the beta right so if you would go and see that what is the lowest beta stocks in indian market so when a company is having So th these are the companies which are having lower beta than I mean they fluctuate lesser than the even indexes right these are another list of the companies which are having high beta value so if index will go up by 1% and if it is positively going that day it will go 1.4% I mean these are the averages which has been taken right so trailing beta with sensex so these kind of uh, articles you will find on the beta side also idea here is yes you will see companies if you see companies which are more stable you know uh, companies bigger companies their predictability of their business is very high you know those kind of companies you will see have lower beta they are moving lesser than the market so there will be companies which is having beta lesser than even 0.9 a point one uh, one overall one so if someone is highly correlated with the market so let's say if nifty goes one percent up this stock goes one percent up if nifty comes down one percent it also coming one down by one percent in that case you will say beta of the stock is one however there will be stocks which will fluctuate more than the market in comparison with the market so their beta will be higher right so if they are fluctuating more idea here is that yes beta is one concept which we will cover in the future also a lot of portfolio during the portfolio management specifically we will be learning about the beta because beta based portfolio will be making apart from this there are a few two three more terms i would like to take here in the same class one is called circuit upper circuit and lower circuit so because you have a lot of unpredictability in the market and the stocks stock exchange sometimes try to cap this so that just because of the emotional 
outburst certain stocks or just because of certain manipulation certain stocks don't crash by 80 90 percent in a day or don't go 40 50 percent in a day so they try to give a cap for market as well cap means so there is a called uh, you know upper circuit of the market so if let's say within certain time frame market opened and it went up by 10 percent exchange will halt the trading for certain minutes and then they will reopen again and wait if the circuit is going again for 5 percent then they will again stop and then probably on the third circuit they will stop for the whole rest rest of the day similarly it happens with the stocks also if it goes up by 5 percent or 10 percent so different kind of upper circuit and lower circuit has been defined for different stocks and also for the exchange right so hope you understand the power of compounding by now and also the fact that since the prices of the stocks are getting determined in present because of the future expectations from those companies and this is the reason why it becomes very difficult to predict i mean all we can say that you know it's impossible to predict the future we can go close to it and then again there are people who who would be positive and negative both that's why this balancing is happening where one stock price is maintaining certain price so just because of this factor you would see that there is a huge fluctuation in the market and market goes up and down so you the the conclusion of the lesson is it is fluctuating but you do not have to go and take advantage of it and become an intraday trader neither nor you have to get worried about it and just think or keep waiting for your prices to arise there is no right or wrong time to enter or exit from the market all you have to do is keep doing the right thing keep investing into the valuable stocks keep creating portfolio keep following the discipline of the investment and don't get worried or hyper excited from the market so the first 12 uh, videos or the chapters are about these kind of questions only so i'm sure if uh, this question always came to your mind that why it is so fluctuating this is the reason you know that uh, behaviorally and future prediction of the performance of the company makes it very volatile and since market is the combination of all the company's performance cumulatively market also become very volatile well thank you see you for the next class